Jesus name we pray. Uh, in Jesus name we pray. You know I want amen. to I want to tell I want to tell us some of the principle of life and that I I don't want to use or see it, but that I, I don't know the word that can use that can make me more humble. Than, uh, than, than, I, don't, I want to say that make me succeed, but I've not succeeded. So I don't want to use succeed. But there's no any little thing they can do or they give to me that I don't try to expand. I'm so weak. I mean, when you are talking about weaker person, my own weaker person is more than woman. I'm telling you. Because there's nothing very, you have been hearing the English of my mouth. You, sometimes you won't even believe that I'm, I'm where I am. The English was so is so bad, but any little thing I lay my hand upon, I always thinking of God. Let out we are expanded. Look at this ministry, the the, the this internet ministry you are, you are you are looking at. I show you to the pastor that came the last time. More than twenty, more than twenty countries. I just I just under under estimate like that. They are watching us. We are broadcasting on TV. Here yeah, in United States. We are broadcasting GS. I must have shared a lot of testimony about that. I won't deceive you. Some baby wig. I'm very sorry, you know, I, I speak I speak low now. Some baby wig in, in deeper life. When they call me like this, you will be surprised. I will just be thinking how did they, how did they know my name? I met one one person in the convention. Uh, one pastor came from South Africa, and I introduced uh, that pastor called me. That said, this person I'm coming to the United States. So the I called the person didn't answer my my I mean didn't answer my call. And then I, we met in the convention. And we have never talked before. Then I said, and then I, said I, I took goodness to to talk to him. I said, Pastor, I sent the message to you. You didn't you didn't reply. Uh, he said, no, I didn't see your plan. Didn't, you didn't, you, uh, all our pastors, you know how humble they are. And now he said, who, uh, what, what is your name, sir? And I said, Matthew Akimo. He said, I, I shouldn't have asked him of your name. Then he started asking questions about me. I've never talked to him. I've never talked to him. That's how little, little thing you think it doesn't matter. It's very big in the hand of the Lord. And I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God is going to use so mighty fully in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to now to call upon the name of the Lord for every individual. We are more than 230. We are about 262 now, you may not know. On the prayer, on the prayer, that's number one. In the number two, we are 80 something. So when you combine everything together, we are getting to about 300 and something. Look at the number we are getting. Not that all those people are not have, having prayer. And that's not, I'm part some people from Odo State. They, they call me, we talk together. They share their life. What about you, all our pastor? What are you doing? Call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, people will not be frustrated. And the assignment God has given us individually, we will not take it away with lesser hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord. 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 The Almighty Power, Almighty Father, you are going to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name we pray. Before I conclude, for all our pastor that is leading the prayer, you will not know my own vision. I'm not just able to, I'm not able to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, I mean, to, I uh, mean, to achieve it. My aim is that people, are, and I'm very sorry, let me mention name. Please, just bear with me. Just bear with me. I will mention name. I only look at all of you like, um, please, and if you don't like it, just bear with me, forgive me. Like Dr. D.K. Odukoya. I'm only look at every one of you like that. That that's my own vision. I know that uh, when I'm saying that, please understand what I'm saying. That God will take you to Irem too in that way, whereby people and that's why only you see go to Matthew Kamo too. You will see all your messages there. That people will be looking for messages and they will say, oh, Pastor, that for preach this message one day. Pastor Ali, pray this message one day. Pastor Shekou, pray this one message one day. Pastor uh, uh, Omeregi, please let, let us go there. That's how I only look at it. I'm trying my effort. I'm just not able to get to that stage. And, that, and that's my dream. That's why I only pray that God will enlarge your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. And then, you know, whatever you do now is what we are going to say about you. It's what other people are going to say about you. And I know you are going to be, I'm not saying you should, it's not a jealous. It's not something. But when you see something that's good, you want to, uh, you want to run the race. 
so that you too, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, your presence, the Jesus preach a message. He said, why? Those people who are in, you, I'm very sorry, not, not me. He said, why? Those people who are in the United States, he was talking about uh, this man that died, this evangelist. He said, I know them. But people who are in Lagos, who are even my member of my church, I don't know their name. Why? They have ministry. But they are not expanding it. They are not doing anything about it. So let's all call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus, from this moment, God will help your family, will help yourself. You will enlarge your course on your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Our time has gone, and I call on Pastor Dagmo to quickly round up for us. We shall meet tomorrow in the garden of the eagle. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, let me hear your voice. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we bless and worship you. Thank you for uh, the time of encouragement. Uh, we know this is the last day. We need more of Christ. We need more of God. We need to be hearing more and be praying more. But Allah, we pray we will not disappoint you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we are with uh, different kinds of distractions and, and all Amen. that, but Lord, uh, above, above it all, we, we don't want to lose concentration on you. We don't want to lose heaven. We pray, Lord, that you bind us together and keep us together at your feet in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Lord, this platform is created uh, by, by people of like manner who wanted prayers, who... who who, who believes in God, and that's why we are here. Lord, we pray that each of those meeting times will, you make us available and that we will pray and you will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Father, Lord, we are praying for everyone that are present today that you will meet their heart desire. Amen. And we will not go in vain in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There are some that are on the road. They are not, uh, they, they still want to still join and still participate. I pray, Lord, that in blessing, you will bless them. And Amen. you will bless Amen. all of us together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless our children. Bless our family. Bless our business. Bless our ministry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord, because we know you have answered our prayers. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord the Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The love, love of the Lord, Lord and the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and for the love of God. Amen. Surely, goodness Jesus and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord, Lord forever and, and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. God bless you. Please go Thank in this damage. Let's Amen. take action. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Hmm. was a terrible thing. If the devil cannot get a Christian through adultery, through fornication, if the devil cannot get a Christian to fall and to yield to temptation through stealing, if the devil cannot get a Christian to drink and to smoke, if the devil cannot get a Christian through, uh, you know, walking through 419, he'll get them by murmuring. He'll get them by complaining. He'll get them by grumbling. The against God, against, God, against the, the word of God, God against the people of God, God against the leadership in the church, 
against their husbands, against their wives, against uh, sectional leaders in the church. They'll find something to murmur about. When the devil is behind somebody and is pushing him and pushing him and pushing him, you will not steal, you will not commit adultery, you will not smoke, you will not drink, and you will not fight. Uh -huh. I'll get you to follow all the same. And many people, when they murmur like that, they don't know they're yielding to the temptation of the devil. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all these things happen unto them. For example, and they are reaching for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Let the people that are overconfident, let them take heed. Let the people that say, I can never fall, I know myself, I'm strong, I'm mighty, I'm powerful. Take heed, lest you fall. Let him that thinketh and standeth, take heed, lest he fall. And he's talking about temptation. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will what the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my beloved, my dearly beloved, flee from my idolatry. You don't say, well, idolatry early and beyond that now. I've grown beyond that. I can overcome that any day. I'm stronger than that. Flee and run away from idol worship. In James chapter 4, James chapter 4, I'm reading from verses 6 and 7. We're looking at the source of victory for the Christian. The Christian that wants to keep on standing and a Christian that wants to remain victorious until Christ comes. The source of that Christian's victory over temptation. James chapter 4 verse 6, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. The people that say, Lord, I am not strong by myself. The people that say, without Christ, I can do nothing, I am nothing. The people that say, I'm not overconfident, I'm not even confident at all in myself. What do I know? What do I have? What can I do? You must help me. He giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The assurance we're given is, if we will resist the devil, in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord, by the anointing of the Spirit of God, and by the conviction, the courage, the boldness the Lord has given us, it says if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. In First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 9, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And then he says, be sober, don't be frivolous, don't be careless. Don't let the devil catch you, be frivolous. Don't let the devil catch you, be littling the word of God, be littling the spiritual things. Don't let the devil catch you, being unserious and careless and carefree. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, uh, the devil who wants to catch the Christian is not frivolous, is watchful, is looking at you for your careless moment, is not carefree, is very serious, and he means business. And if you don't mean business, you really stand firm in the Lord. Knowing there is a crown waiting for you. Knowing that Christ is coming. And you need to endure to the end if you are going to be saved. If you are not as serious as the devil. And the devil is so serious running after you. Wanting to make you fall. If you forget yourself. If you are carefree. And if you are free for loss, he will catch you. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking, whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Resist him persistently. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And then you need the word of God. We're told in Psalm 119, Psalm 1. 
119. In Psalm 119, reading from verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Are we going to remain clean? Remain righteous, remain pure, remain victorious, remain more than a conqueror by taking heed according to thy word. A real Christian who understands that it's important to have victory over temptation will not play for the word of God. He'll read that word. He will study that word. And you'll underline salient, important passages that strike you in the word of God. You will eat of that bread of life, of that word of God. You will sharpen the sword of the spirit, the word of God in your life. If you want to have the victory, because that's how you can cleanse your way. That's how you can remain clean, remain victorious. By taking heed according to thy word, with my whole heart, have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Don't hide other things in your heart. You understand? If you fill your box with useless, worthless, unimportant things, there will be no space for real things of importance in that box anymore. And if you fill the bucket or something worthless, useless, unimportant, you'll not have space in that bucket for something that is very useful and very necessary. When you fill your heart with unnecessary things, things of this life and the cares of this life, there will be no space in that place for the word of God. And it is the word of God that gives you the victory every time. Your word, have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's how to have the victory. Of course, you must be a man of decision, a man of determination, a man of passion, a man of purpose, that you are not going to sin, you are not going to yield to the devil in Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. You need that purpose because that meat will come, the dainty meat of Babylon, and the desires of the people of the world, and the pressures and the pleasures of the people of the world. Of course it will come, but you make a purpose in your heart, determination, decision within you. You will not defile yourself, except that purpose of heart is there, you will be defiled, because the thing will be so attractive, and the thing will be so inviting, and the thing will be so pleasing to the flesh, and then it will be so popular. Many other people are doing it, why don't you? Many other people are yielding, why don't you? you yield. You must have a purpose in your heart if you're going to overcome the devil. In First Timothy chapter 6, First Timothy chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 9. Here the word of God is reminding us, they that will be rich fall into temptation and it's near. The people who want money at all costs, they must have it. They must be rich. Quick, quick, even as teenagers, even as young people, we must have the money now. Education, not important. Training, not important. And having wisdom in life, that's not important. We need money, 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 money now. And the men and the women that are just committed to looking for money, if they go anywhere, if they come to church, if they read the Bible, all they're looking for is promises on money. And they're not thinking of holiness, righteousness, sanctification, everything is money. You're going to fall into temptation because the money will so blindfold you, you will not know how to escape temptation. It says, but for the love of but they that will be rich fall into temptation is near. And it will many foolish and not for lost, which draw men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Even in the church, if there is a love of money, 
It will be the root of all evil. You are told to go and buy something for the church. And you will be looking for you are going to cheat the church. Because the love of money is there. And you are backsliding long, long ago without recovering yourself. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which was some coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, man of God, child of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. And as profess a good profession before many witnesses. And we're told in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Reading from verses 40 and 41. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 40, and he comments unto, comments unto his disciples and findeth them asleep. And says unto Peter, what? Could ye not watch with me an hour, one hour, watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We need to keep on praying, because it is a prayer that will shield you, that will strengthen you, that will help you and support you to overcome temptation. In First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, reading from verse 12. First John chapter 2, verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I have written unto you, I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. If we're going to be strong to the point to overcome the wicked one, it's as a result of the word of God abiding in us. Once again, let me ask you, what's the source of the Christian's victory over temptation? Number one, the presence of Christ within. I'll never leave you. I'll be with you. So, when the devil comes, realize, be conscious of the presence of Christ within. Number two, the power of the Spirit. The Spirit that dwelt, that raised up Jesus from the dead. It dwells in your mortal body. And because it dwells in you and remains in you, you'll be victorious. Number three, persevering in purity to endure to the end. Every time temptation comes, you understand, you are pure yesterday. But you must continue persevering in purity so that you will endure unto the very end. Number four, prevailing prayer of faith. Watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. Prevailing prayer of faith. Number five, persistent resistance of temptation. Persistent resistance of temptation. Oh, the devil will still come. You keep on persisting. You keep on resisting. I said no before Satan. I'm still saying no. And the devil said, why don't you do this? You've been, you know, waiting for marrying somebody and you've tried and tried and there is no believer to get married to. Why don't you go and marry an unbeliever? That's a great temptation. And you say, Satan, I said no two years ago. I said no last year. I'm still saying no today. My mother suggested it. I said no. And my auntie suggested it. I said no. And some backsliders who have done it and they have lost their victory, they have lost the glory of God in their lives. Some backsliders suggested to me, I said no. And you are saying it, I'm still saying no. That's how to overcome the devil. Persistent resistance of temptation. Then number six, you have the purpose of living. You're seeking for God's glory. You have a purpose in your heart. You have a purpose in your mind. And you're focused on the Lord. You say, that's all I'm living for. That's all I'm living for. The purpose for living. 
Then number seven, possession of God's grace. You're seeking the grace of God and you have the grace of God. You possess the grace of God. And the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. Possession of God's grace. Number eight is passion and vision for heaven. You want to get to heaven. You know there is heaven. You know Jesus has got to prepare a place for you. And you know if you are going to be in heaven, everyone that has their soap in him purifies himself, even as he is pure, because of that passion and vision for heaven. That's why you will not yield to temptation. Number nine, proclamation and pursuit of Christ's victory. You are proclaiming the victory of Christ. And you are saying, because he triumphed, I will, I will triumph too. Because you overcame, I will overcome too. You are proclaiming and you are pursuing the victory of Christ. Number 10, the promise of divine support and help. The promise of divine support and help. You are relying upon the promise of God. And it says, I will support you. You will not fall. I will keep you. I will hold you in my hand. I will not allow you to fall. And you are depending upon that promise of divine support and divine help. I come to point number three. The strains of conquerors and victors over the tempter. The strains of conquerors and victors over the tempter. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor, is able to sustain, is able to support, is able to hold up them that are tempted. Because Christ has overcome. In all his temptations, he was a victor. Because you overcame, you too you can overcome. That's why you go to the Lord in prayer. That's why you are serious and you are telling the Lord, Lord, help me, sustain me, support me, and hold me up, hold my hand so that I will not fall. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 14. See them that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast a profession. For we have not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like us we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's come boldly to the throne of grace. That, that's the reason when, after you've had the word of God, and you come to pray, you pray with all your heart, with all your soul. Because you don't want to appear like... Um, you know, mocking God, and you don't want to appear like little children, I mean real, real infants, who do not know the essence of prayer, and they do not know the reason for prayer, and they do not know the power we derive in prayer, they do not know the need we have of prayer, and therefore when their parents tell them to pray, you know what they do at home, those little, little infants, but those of us, teenagers, those of us, men and women that know God, that, that that know that we need strength from the Lord. We come to the throne of grace because we need help. Temptation will come today. Temptation will come during the week. Temptation will come in our lives. We need the strength of the Lord. We need the grace of the Lord. Therefore, we come with all seriousness. And we come with all heavy heart. And with a, a disposition that is telling the Lord, I cannot bear this load alone. I cannot overcome this temptation alone. I cannot live this life alone. Help me. That's how the Lord will help. Isaiah chapter 40. In Isaiah chapter 40, reading from verse 28, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. If your temptations are so much, and your temptations are almost overwhelming you, and you're almost fainting, almost falling, almost yielding, almost succumbing and surrendering to the devil, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. 
even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. You know, the youths and the young men that are thinking, oh, we're strong. There's nothing, oh, all those people bring in the temptation. Are they not uh, teenagers like myself, young people like myself? I can overcome. They are surprised when the temptations eventually come and they fall. And that's why the encouragement is coming to boys, girls, teenagers, adults, men, women, all believers. Wait on the Lord. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I pray the Lord will give us the spirit of supplication. The spirit of prayer. And we will overcome in Jesus' name. In Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Reading from verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. You are going to overcome the devil. Be strong and of a good courage. Don't let the devil see fearfulness, timidity, and trembling and shaking in you. If the devil sees that you are afraid of him, you're afraid of evil spirits, and you're afraid of witches and wizards, and you're afraid of, uh, you know, girls and women and tempters and temptresses. If the devil sees that you are not sure of the grace of God in you, you are not sure of the strength and the might of the spirit of the living God, and you're always quaking, always trembling, always, you know, timid, and the devil is going to take advantage of that. Be strong. And of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Be committed to the word of God. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Don't look for any easy way. Just stay with the word word of God, abide with the word of God every time. And then it says that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Don't meditate on what the worldly people are saying. What the backsliders are teaching, what the backsliders are suggesting. Don't meditate on what the tempters are saying. Meditate on the word of God. The book of the law of God shall not depart from your mouth. You'll meditate on it day and night. Why? So that you'll be able, you'll be, you'll observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and then shall thou have Good success in um, Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. I read from verse 1, verse 2, and then verse 11. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. The word of God has your strength. The armor of the Lord has your strength. Put on your strength people of God. And then it says your beautiful garment, the garment of salvation and the garments of praise. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Have you fallen already? Rise up. As the devil put your nose, your mouth to the ground to lick the doors, shake yourself from the doors and say, My enemy rejoice not against me. When I fall, I shall rise again. I see maybe a backslider. And now you are in the far country. And you are in the midst of swines and souls and pigs. Trying to eat what the people of the world are eating. And drinking what the people of the world are drinking. Arise and shake yourself from the doors. And see thou Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. If the devil has put a single rope around your neck. And you are still sitting down there. It's going to make another turn. Another round. Another chain. If the devil has defeated you and you are lying down there, is going to bring a heavy chain and tie you down there until the day of resurrection, until the day of the rapture, tie you down there that will not allow you to rise. And before he does that and manifest greater power in your life to keep you down, rise up 
and say, no, I will not remain a backslider. I'm going to serve the Lord. Temptations no more. Sin no more. Yielding to the devil no more. I'm going to be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. Shake yourself from the doors. Arise and sit down and loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. And in verse 11, depart ye, depart ye. Come out of that place. And the prostitutes are ganging up around you. And the, gang, the, the gangs of robbers are trying to make you to be in their company. Come out of there and touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her and be clean. Ye that bear the vessels of the Lord. And say, you will have the victory. And you will have the victory in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling you today. If you are backsliding, you have yielded to temptation. And the Lord is saying, you can repent. And you can turn to the Lord. You can shake yourself from the doors. You can arise. And all those evil things that you have gone into, you, you can turn away from them. All the gangs you have, you have, uh, you have joined. All the society you have joined. All the people, unserious people, devilish people, backsliding people, sinful people. And the people that are not going to heaven. And they are inviting, and you have joined them. It says, come out from the midst of them. And be separate, says the Lord. And then I will receive you. I will take you unto myself. I'll be your father. You'll be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And I shall come, and the Lord forgives you. Don't just stay there. Keep on moving on. And have greater Christian experiences in your life. When you are saved, don't stay there. Get sanctified. When you are sanctified, don't stay there. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, don't stay there. Be involved in the service of the Lord and be winning souls. And yield yourself fully to the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. You can't be weak in the Lord. If you are in the Lord, you will not be weak. If you are in the Lord, you will not be timid. If you are in the Lord, you will not be fearful. If you are in the Lord, you will not be shaking for the devil. If you are in the Lord, you will be strong in the Lord. If you are in the Lord already, come on and come nearer to the Lord. Come closer to the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. And don't just say, well, I put on this one, I put on that one. That's enough. No, it's not enough. It's not enough. Keep on moving on. Keep on moving on. And it says, you'll put on the whole arm of God. That he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Thank God we can stand. I said, thank God we can stand. When the devil comes like a roaring lion. When he comes like a mighty flood. And he wants to overwhelm you. You have the faith in God. You have the understanding in God. You have the conviction in God. We, the people of God, we can stand. And we will stand in Jesus name. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Is wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. The day of temptation, that's the evil day. The day when the devil is soliciting that you fall into temptation, that you go back to your vomit and take up your vomit again, that's the evil day. But when you rise now and when you shake yourself from the doors and you call upon the name of the Lord and now you put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. I mean, your loins got about what truth. I mean, on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, beyond all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench. How many that's of the devil? How many? Ah, we cannot victory, no matter from what direction the devil is coming. No matter the darts, the fairy darts, and the arrows that the devil might be throwing. No matter the meaning always. Praying always, serious prayer. Praying always, fervent prayer. 
Praying always heartfelt prayer. Praying always sincere prayer. Praying always prayer of faith. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there unto you. And with all perseverance and supplication with all saints. That's how we're going to have the victory. You will not allow the devil to touch you. And he will not touch you. You will not allow the devil to bring you down. He will not bring you down. In First John chapter 5 verse 18. First John chapter 5 verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. When you are born of God, the grace is there not to sin. The power is there not to sin. The virtue of Christ is there not to sin. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. You will keep yourself. You cannot be running around with backsliders and think you are going to stay. You are going to stand firm. You cannot be running around with hypocrites and think that you are going to go free. You cannot be running around with people that do not take the word of God serious and think that you are going to get to heaven. He keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. And then in verse 21, little children, keep yourselves from idols. You will keep yourselves. That's how the Lord is going to keep you. You show the seriousness that you actually want to stand. You want to be kept in the Lord and kept in the faith. That's how you stand. In Jude, reading from verse 20. Jude, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves. Boys, keep yourselves. Girls, keep yourselves. Fathers and mothers, keep yourselves. If you are born again, if you are a child of God, and you have the desire to get to heaven, keep yourselves. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our God of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference in your evangelism. You are going out, you are evangelizing. That's all right. Have compassion on them. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. There are some sinners that already they are the brink of hell. And some of those sinners do not care whether they go to hell or don't go to hell. And they want to pull. Now even the believers that are trying to evangelize them, be wise. I'm a wise, a serpent, and gentle, harmless as doves. It says, all that save what fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. God is able. I said, God is able. Whatever temptations may face your life, and whatever challenges you may face, whatever trials may be there, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And everybody said, Amen. The Lord will keep you. The Lord understands what you are going through. He has enough grace for you. Grace for salvation. Grace for sanctification. Grace for your trials. And grace for every need of your life. Let's now go boldly before the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. I pray that all of us who have heard this word today, the salvation of the Lord will not miss us in Jesus' name. And then the strength of the Lord to stand firm and stand faithful and stand true unto the end. The Lord will make us stand in Jesus' name. Pray to the Lord before you go. And tell the Lord, O oh Lord, here am I. I want to be an overcomer. I want to overcome temptation every time. I know the grace is there. I know the promise is there. I know the power is there. I know the preservation is there. I know the strength of the Lord is there. And I know that you have promised to keep me. And you will keep me. And I want to be kept. And I know your presence will go with me. He is Emmanuel. God with us. He will be with you. If you are not born again, give your life to the Lord and be born again.
If you are not a child of God yet, why don't you repent of your sin? Turn away from your sin and say, Lord, here I come. I am a sinner. I know that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe, I believe, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the Lord will save you. And if you have been saved, you need the strength of the Lord. And you need purpose of heart, purpose of heart. That you are focused on the glory of God alone. You, have, you need that purpose of heart so that the Lord Himself will know that you really want the Lord and you desire the Lord. Pray. If you have been saved, that the Lord will give you the victory over sin, victory over temptation, a victory over your trials. And if you have not been sanctified, why don't you get sanctified? Because you see, that Adamic nature within can be an attraction for the devil, a magnet for the devil, that the devil will be coming and that Adamic nature will not allow you to remain stable and steadfast in the Lord. Why don't you say, Lord, sanctify me? You desire sanctification? You consecrate for sanctification? And you pray for sanctification? And you believe the Lord for sanctification? It says, I'll take the stony heart out of their flesh. I will give them the heart of flesh. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him take away that Adamic nature. Let him take away that root of sin. Let him take away that propensity to evil. Propensity and tendency to murmuring, to grumbling, to complaining. Let him take everything away. And say, Lord, wash me, cleanse me of the blood of the Lamb. Cleanse me, wash me with the blood of the Lamb. Help me to be stable. Help me to be steadfast. I want to serve the Lord. In all sincerity, I want to serve the Lord. Wholeheartedly, I want to serve the Lord. I don't want to be falling and rising, falling and rising, falling and rising. I want to be steadfast and stable in the Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I cannot overcome by myself alone. I cannot overcome by myself alone. Without me, ye can do nothing. But with Christ, with Christ, with Christ, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do, I can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He will strengthen you. You'll overcome. Put on the strength of God. Put on the armor of God. Put on all the armor of God that you may be able to stand and withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Don't let the devil get you. Don't let the temptation pull you down. And don't let all these things that are uh, dangling before you in the world, don't let them overwhelm you. You can stand. You can stand. You will stand in the strength of the Lord and the might of the Lord. And remember, whosoever shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. If you yield to temptation and you fall and you don't endure to the end, if Jesus comes and meets you in that falling condition, you'll miss heaven forever. You'll spend eternity in hell. That's why it's important for you to rise now. Arise and shine. Shake off yourself from the dust. And be free. From all those evil things that want to overwhelm your life. Put on the strength of the Lord. And don't go back into those evil things anymore. And the Lord will keep you true. And keep you faithful. Keep you standing. Keep you victorious and triumphant until the very end. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we come before you tonight. We praise your name because of what you've done for us, individually and collectively as a church. We pray that as we see the closing chapter, which we've been studying for a long time, concerning Stephen, we pray that you will make us to see the grace and the truth and the influence and the impact, the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon this man again so that we ourselves 
will be able to have more of your power and presence in our lives at all times in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have spent quite some time studying the life and the ministry of Stephen. And we have spent quite a long time looking at the grace and the gifts of God in the life of this wonderful man. And as we have got a glimpse of what the power of God has done in his life, we cannot but just look up to God and say, what you have done in the life of this individual, do within us as well. And today we come to the end of chapter 7, which apparently is also the end of the life of Stephen. And he started his life, the time we've known him in the scriptures, in such a glorious way. And the end was glorious as well. And we have seen how God, in his power, by his presence, can be with his own children, and it will be our best for him in all situations. As we come to the close of Stephen's earthly life and ministry, I want you to see some contrasts in the chapter that we read now, the end of the chapter. We'll just quickly go through the end of the chapter because there is so much in this end of the chapter. And perhaps many preachers do not think of the much we have in the few verses that end up the life of this man and the chapter before us. I want you to see some contrasts there. The contrast between a spirit-filled man and a Satan-inspired mob. The contrast between the righteous and the religious. The contrast between a far-sighted visionary saint of God and a short-sighted vicious sinner. The contrast between love and hate. You see that in the closing part of this chapter. And many casual readers, they see Stephen as a victim as the chapter closes and his life ends. But no, you don't see Stephen as a victim, he's a victor. And he was even more than a conqueror. I want to remind you that the members of the Sanhedrin or the council had called him for questioning. They had accused him of four things. Number one, blasphemy against God. Number two, blasphemy against Moses. Number three, blasphemy against the law. And number four, blasphemy against the temple. These, I told you before, are great issues. They were great issues in the lives, in the policy, the religion of the children of Israel at the time. And they, they leveled this four-count charge against him, against God, Moses, the law, and the temple. And they wanted him as an accused, as a criminal, as a lawbreaker, as a blasphemer to come before them and give them answers to the questions they were asking. And it, it's fantastic. It's just marvelous how this man stood before them without any fear of the consequence of the actions they were taking, without any fear as to what their response will be. And very systematically, line upon line, precept upon precept, he went through the scriptures and he told them his faith, his confidence in God. And at the end of the whole thing, he showed them that he was a firm believer in God. He was a believer, not a blasphemer. And concerning Moses, he told them that he had received the ministry that God gave to Moses with a good spirit. That God chose Moses for a ministry, for a time, for a dispensation, for a period of time. And at that time, it was a necessary thing that Moses came to do. He told them that concerning the law, the law had been given. And the law had a time, a period, a dispensation. And for what the law was supposed to do, it was all right at the time it was given. And for the purpose it was given. Concerning the temple, he told them he believed in the temple. Only that they could not restrict the Almighty inside the confines of a small temple. Now, do you know that by the time he finished, 
he had told them that he was not the person they should accuse. If they wanted to find anybody that did not have faith in God, confidence in God, they were the people. If they wanted to find anybody that rejected Moses and rejected the greatest prophecy that came from the mouth of Moses concerning the Messiah, they were the people. And concerning the law, he told them the children of Israel had never obeyed the laws of God. And concerning the temple, he told them they were just misusing the temple. As they must remember that there was even a time Jesus made his scourge and he drove them out because they were making his father's house a den of thieves and robbers. And do you know that by the time he finished, he was no more talking like an accused, a criminal. He was talking like a witness, a true witness to the greatness and the glory of God, to the goodness and the kindness of God. And he was talking as a preacher, a preacher of divine truth, a preacher of the gospel, a preacher exalting Jesus Christ the Lord. And you know, he talked as a judge. They were sitting wanting to judge him, but then he gave a witness. The false witnesses were rising up, but he rose up and he was a true ambassador, a true witness. And the people who were making themselves to be the proclaimers of the truth in the nation, they were sitting down and they listened to this man as he was preaching and proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, going from one part of scripture to the other. And as these people were sitting down to judge Stephen, Stephen just stood firm and he became a judge to them. He addressed them as a witness, as a preacher, as a judge. As I come to the end of this chapter 7, I see a number of things, opposites, in the end of the chapter. On the part of the children of Israel, on the part of the members of the council, on the part of the people rejecting and resisting the truth, I see hate, cruelty, pride, a tragedy that they were in terrible darkness and confusion. And I saw the, the vengeance and the fanaticism of their lives. But on the side of, of Stephen, our man, the man of God, upon whom the Spirit of God was abiding, you see holiness, compassion, praying, triumph, calmness, vision, and forgiveness. And so then you can see, you put the sinners on the one side and the saint of God on the other side. You put these uh, people, the mob on one side and the minister of the gospel on the other side. What do you see when you look at the left and you look at the right? You see hate confronted with holiness. You see cruelty, but he responded to that cruelty with just compassion. You see their pride in their religion, but you see the praying of a righteous man. You see the tragedy on their side. You see the triumph of a man who knows the grace and the power of God. You see their confusion, but you see his calmness. You see their vision, and you hear about his vision. You see their fanaticism, and he talks about his own forgiveness for them. Above all, and beyond all, you see grace and truth overcoming all evil. Now, as we look into the closing part of the chapter, come to chapter 7, reading from verse 54. Chapter 7 from verse 54. When they had heard these things, they were caught to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young, at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul was consenting unto his death. 
In this a chapter for us to really understand, we're divided into four subheadings. Conviction, consequences, cruelty, compassion. We want to see the conviction for sin, the consequences of spirit and feeling, the cruelty of the Sanhedrin, and the compassion of Stephen. Concerning the conviction for sin, anywhere the true gospel is preached, anywhere the word of God is spoken, anywhere the spirit of God is leading a preacher to proclaim the good news, the glad tidings, the covenant message, and to proclaim the mystery of the kingdom, you'll find out something. The hearers will be convicted of their sins. Now, conviction does not mean conversion. Conviction does not mean repentance. Conviction does not mean salvation. It just means the Holy Spirit applying the truth, applying the word of God so much to the hearts of the people that are hearing. They are taught. They are preached. They are caught to the heart. They are convicted. They are made insecure. And they are made to tremble because of the weight and the load of their sins. After that conviction, after the touching and the cutting of their hearts, after the pricking of their conscience, they may repent and be converted. They may rebel and be condemned. Now, in the case before us, they rebelled and they were condemned. But in other cases in the Bible, we see that the people have been convicted the one that knows the end from the Alpha, you are the Omega. God, we come to you this night, O oh God. Lord, we, your children, we have come, we have, we have a covenant with you to seek your face tirelessly, to, face, to, to seek your face on the, on, uh, from time to time, and so, God, we are here at this time. We are praying, oh God, that as we have come before you, God of heaven, our prayer come unto you as we smell in sorrow, even tonight. Father, we are praying that tonight, oh God, you will visit every one of us by your mighty power in the name of Jesus Christ. All our brethren, we pray for them, O oh God. All our pastors who are supposed to be on the platform and they are not yet here. Holy Father, we pray that all our pastors, all our sisters, O oh God, help every one of us, O oh God, to be committed to this God-given assignment of intercessory prayer. I will pray, Lord, that you will visit us, you will renew our strength and our vision in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Sorry, I'm not hearing us at all. Are you hearing my voice? Yes. yes. Please, let's respond. I'm not, I'm not actually hearing us. It's like I'm the only one doing the talking. Please. Uh, uh... The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, by the special grace of God, we want to spend this appreciate God. We want to give all the glory to God, the God that has brought us all the way from January. We cross over to February. I want to look at the event of things this year alone. It has been another rugged year. So many things, a lot of water has passed under the bridge, economy changes, climatic condition changing, everywhere is almost becoming in many other nations, and a lot of things have been happening, yet God of heaven has been sustaining us as his own children. We want to open our mouth at this time, look at Psalm 103, Psalm 103, he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Brothers and sisters, I want your soul to bless God this night. I want your soul to appreciate God for everything God of heaven has been doing in your personal life, in our life, in our ministry, in your family life, in the life of your spouse, in the life of your children, in all your, in your business enterprise, and everything all around you. Forget about all the challenges you are facing. 
Let's take our time and praise God at this time. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Think about all that God of heaven has done for you. Right from January to through to February to March to April to May to June to July to August, and this is September. Brothers, can you, are you saying that God has not done so much for you? Are you saying that God has not been faithful to you? Are you saying that God has not been the one that has been sustaining you? Think about how many journeys you have made this year. And God has been preserving you, preserving your family. I mean, there is no untimely death. We want to praise God. We want to say, Father, thank you. Please open your mouth and join me to appreciate God. Let your soul, let everything that is inside you, your intestine, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your body, everything to appreciate God. Open your mouth and give all the glory to God tonight. Give all the glory to God tonight. Give all the glory to God tonight. Let's bless the name of the Lord. I want to hear us praying, my brethren. Open your mouth and appreciate God tonight. Because our God is good. Our God is kind. Our God is loving. Let's open our mouth to appreciate God and adore him. Almighty God, everlasting Father God, I have come this night, oh Lord, to praise you, to worship you, to honor you, to appreciate you. Because you are the King of kings. Because you are the Lord of lords. Because you are the Alpha and the Omega. Because you are the one that has been sustaining our life. Right from the beginning of this year, January 1st, you kept us, oh God, despite all these storm winds that have been blowing, despite all the challenges here and there, despite all the difficulties all the way that came alongside with this year, yet God of heaven, you have been helping us to overcome in the battles of life. Almighty God, we are grateful. Almighty God, we are grateful. So many challenges, whether spiritually, physically, health-wise, financial-wise, yet God, you have been making us to be victorious. No wonder the Bible says, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory over Satan, victory over demons, victory over principalities, victory over the powers of darkness, victory over the rulers of the darkness of this world, victory over spiritual wickedness in high places, victory over all the territorial demons, victory over all the power fighting against our family, victory over all the forces of darkness fighting against our wives, against our husband, victory over all the forces of darkness fighting against our children. Let's open our mouth to say, God, thank you once again, oh Lord. We are indeed very grateful unto you, O oh God. Let's praise God. Let's appreciate God. Let's honor the name of the Lord. Almighty God, everlasting Father God, we praise you. Lord, we adore you once again, O oh God. Lord, we say thank you once again because of the way you have been fighting our battle for us. So many battles against believers, especially in this end time. So many battles against our soul. So many battles against our family. So many battles against us in the ministry. So many battles against us, even against our wives, against our husband, against our children. So many battles here and there. But God, all we could say, God of heaven, oh God, you are the one that has been granting us the victory, oh God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I'm not hearing us, brethren. Amen. 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 What shall we say unto the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, God. Oh, yes. What shall I say unto the Lord? All we oh, have to say is thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All I have to say is thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, God. What shall we say? Oh, you Lord. All we have to say is thank you, God. Oh, yes. What shall we say? On to the love, all we have to say is thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, God. All we have to say is thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you. Oh, sing that song. What shall we say? All we have to say is thank you, God. Oh, what shall I say? All I have to say. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, God. Give. All oh, thanks to the Lord. Thanks to thanks the Lord. Lord. Thanks to thanks the Lord. 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 We Lord. give oh, thanks to the Lord. Thanks Lord. to the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks to Lord. the Lord. We give all oh, thanks to Lord. the Lord. Thanks to you, the Lord. Oh, thanks, thanks to the Lord. You. To the Lord we give. Oh, thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. Oh, yes, thanks to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, we want to glorify the name of the Lord. We want to thank God on behalf of the sponsor of this program. This prayer, this online prayer meeting, our pastor, Pastor Matthew, and those who have been that God have been using to also donate financially, you know, to supply one thing or the other. We want to bless the name of the Lord. We want to give him all the praises and say, Father, thank you because you did not allow the host of darkness to prevail over him, over his finances, and even over those people. Let's open our mouth to begin to say, Father, thank you once again. <laughs> Thank you. Let's open our mouth to appreciate God. How God has been sustaining every, you know, this online prayer meeting. For how many years now, the grace of God has been available. The Lord has been helping all our pastors. The Lord has been helping all our sisters. The Lord has been helping all our brothers who have been joining. Let's give him all the praise. Even though we have challenges one on one with the other, yet God has been helping us. He said, I will, he said, He will make a way where there is no way. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to appreciate God? God of heaven has been so faithful to us in the day and the night. God of heaven has been the one that has been strengthening us. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Why don't you open your mouth to appreciate God and say, Father, you are my shield. You are our buckler. You are our eye tower. You are the one that has been sustaining us. You are the one that has been fighting our battle for us. You are the great shepherd. You are the one that has been providing. Even to all the needs of God concerning this online prayer meeting. Let's give him all the praises once again tonight. Let's begin to say, God, thank you so much because even though you have helped us, oh God, 
He is that the God of heaven has assisted, assisted us in this online prayer meeting in the day and the night. Let's worship, let's worship God. Let's worship God. Let's praise him. Let's give all the glory unto God once again and say, Father, thank you once again, O oh Lord. God, you are good. God, you are great. God, we thank you because you are the great provider. You are the one that been sustaining, oh God, this online prayer meeting. We have seen your hand, oh God, your hand of power, your hand of authority and mercy, oh God, concerning this online prayer meeting in various dimensions, in various degrees, oh God, whether on Monday or Sunday or Sunday or Monday or Thursday or Saturday, you have been the one that has been helping us, oh God. Thank you for all our pastors. Thank you for all our brothers. Thank you for all our sisters. Thank you for their dedication. Thank you for their commitment. Thank you for the strength of the Lord. Thank you for all the sponsors on this concerning this program, O oh Lord. Almighty God, everlasting Father, we praise you once again, O oh God. We are grateful unto you, God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We want to pray once again, brethren. We want to call upon the name of the Lord. Firstly, we want to commit our lives into the hand of God. The Bible says, if a man therefore pour himself, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Vessel unto honor, vessel of honor, vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good works. We want to examine our lives. We want to check up our life, brethren. We want to look into our life, brethren. We are in the last days. So many things are happening to many believers now. So many believers are now victim of situation, victim of circumstance. In fact, a lot of casualties now, spiritual casualties. Many are falling by the wayside. Many are secretly backsliding. Many have gone astray. Many that we see in our churches, we think that they are still, they are, they are still, you know, maintaining the Christian stand. But God did not know them. Their names have been deleted from the book of life. We want to examine ourselves. The Bible says, it says, examine yourselves. It says, know ye not your own self. Prove yourself. And it says, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. We want to examine our lives. We want to check up our life, brethren. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the Lord this night. And say, God, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thought and see. If there be any wicked ways in me, O God, let's open our mouth and call upon the Lord. Let's not be in a rush. Open your mouth and call upon the Lord. Let's ask God and say, God of heaven, O Lord, what if the trumpet should sound now? How prepared am I for the coming of the Lord? How prepared are you for the coming of the Lord? We want to examine our life, our thought, our imagination, our character, our behavior. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God and say, God of heaven, O oh Lord, every, every filthiness of the flesh, anything that has come between us and God that wouldn't allow us to behold his glory, that wouldn't allow us to behold his power, that wouldn't allow us even to witness the power as of old. We want to pray and say, God, this night, let those things be taken out of our lives tonight. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and call upon the Lord and say, God of heaven, O Lord, our eyes are upon you once again, O Lord. Search me, O God, and know my heart, my Father. Lord, I present my heart, my thought, my soul, my spirit, my imagination, everything about me unto you, God. Almighty God, everlasting Father, all the pollution of the world. Almighty God, all the contamination of the world. Almighty God, every defilement of the world that has come into our heart, into my thought, into my soul, into my spirit, into my family. Almighty God, I'm asking, oh Lord, let the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, oh God, begin to cleanse and begin to put everything out of our life this morning, this night, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, anywhere sin is eating in our hearts, in our thoughts, oh great God, I'm asking my Father once again, let your spirit and power begin to operate and begin to work in our life this night in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, once again, oh God, make our heart clean, oh God. In Jesus' name, 
we have prayed. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to read from Matthew chapter 24. Please turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 24. Because I need to read some things to us here. Matthew chapter 24. And I want to read in verse 4. Matthew chapter 24. In verse 4. Please open your Bible. Matthew chapter 24 verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. We are living at a time that many people are getting deceived. Many people are getting lured into a lot of false things and all other things here and here. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, you see, and many false prophets, many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. It's happening now under our nose here. So many false teachers, so many false prophets. And then he said, verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. Brothers and sisters, let's not deceive ourselves. The love of many of our brethren is wasking cold. I was in the wow. church on Thursday. And uh, when I go to the church, I go to the church a few minutes, I think around after six or thereabout, as I was rushing, thinking that I was already late. Do you know? Oh, I was amazed. When I got to the church, as I'm talking to you now, I'm in Lagos, by the grace of God. And as I go to the district, to that district church where I worship there, in fact, I sat to seven. The service has not started. To seven. The service that's supposed to start by six o'clock. Adult members were just strolling in. I was checking my time. It was almost around 640 something. I said, yeah. I, I was even asking one of the youth girl. I said, are we not going to have service in the church again today? In fact, I was amazed. I was almost getting discouraged. I said, what is going on? In the church of God, the same Lagos church, Lagos church, Lagos church. I mean, it is very pathetic what we are witnessing in this end time. And I'm telling you, the love of many is wasking cold. It's as if the cares of this life is taking away the place of God in our hearts. It's as if cares of other things has taken over the place of the Almighty God. And not only that, you see, the Bible says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Uh, there is a man, maybe you must have been seeing that on your Facebook. Let me just tell you, I want to mention the name of the man. And you need to be very careful when you listen to that man's message. That's why I'm, I'm publicly announcing it now. Now, the name of that man, maybe you have heard him. He called himself Abel Damina. Please, brethren, be very, very careful. Avoid that man's teaching. That man is raised up by the devil. That man is an apostate. He's not even a backslider. He's an apostate. That man, you know, the last, the last, the one I listened to just recently, just this few weeks, a few days ago, I was told that he said that Jesus Christ did not ascend to heaven, that there is nothing that believers are not going to heaven, that there's nothing like heaven. And that he said that angel came to lie, that they came to lie to us, that Jesus Christ did not go to heaven. And so many other nonsense, I'm telling you, nonsense I call it. You know, foolish things that have been, I mean, coming out from the mouth of the man. And uh, we have to be very careful and be careful of all these false teachers and false prophets. Not only that, there is another man again. Maybe you must have been encountering that also. And uh, the man is a Muslim, the opposite religion. They call it one uh, Adepoju or so from Oshu State. He has been deceiving a lot of so many. <coughs> He's been deceiving so many gullible Christian, nominal Christian. And Jesus is warning us. And he's saying, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. 
That's why I have to come publicly to mention their names. This night, we want to pray for ourselves. Because if you look at the word of Jesus Christ very well, much afraid. No man ever spoke like him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Nobody ever said that. I am the bread of life. Nobody ever said that. He that eateth of me of this bread shall live forever. Nobody ever said that, and nobody ever could say that. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. Nobody ever said that. I and my father are one. Nobody ever said that. He that has seen me has seen the father. Can you imagine any of the Old Testament men of God, women of God saying anything like that? He that has seen me has seen the father. I will rise the third day. He predicted, he prophesied. Yes, they'll take me. Yes, they'll crucify me. And yes, they'll put me to death for a purpose, for the salvation of the world. And then exactly on the third day, I will rise again. Nobody ever said that. No man ever said what he said. No man ever did what he did. And that is our Savior. That is your Savior. Tonight, the message is titled, Christ's Prevailing Power and Our Unwavering Faith. Christ's Prevailing Power and Our Unwavering Faith. A sea is full of power, and his name means power. His authority means power. His message communicates power unto us. His ministry makes power to come into our lives. We must have unwavering faith. Christ's prevailing power and our unwavering faith. As we look at Mark chapter 6 tonight, there are three things we're looking at as we divide the verses. So three parts. Number one, is conquering power over uncommon tempests. Is conquering power over uncom uncommon tempests. Number two, our costless panic with unnecessary torment. The panic, the fear, the fright, the anxiety, the worry that we manifest unnecessarily, our costless panic with unnecessary torment. Number three, the compassionate people with unwavering trust. As they saw him come to their community, they went everywhere bringing people who have needs in their lives, bringing them to Christ. They were compassionate. They were considerate. They were sympathetic. And when they saw Jesus, the solution to every problem, they went forth and brought all the people to him because they had unwavering trust in him. The compassionate people with unwavering trust. Point number one now is conquering power over uncommon tempest. Look at verse 45 again. Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the sheep and to go to the other side. You may want to underline that in your Bible, to go to the other side. We need to understand and need to remember that whatever Jesus says will come to pass. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his word shall never pass away.